Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. Make sure you stay tuned. You listen up. It's mid-round madness time. We're identifying some of the best ADP values between rounds four and eight. Guys that we think are being drafted way too far down the list. You should move them up. Grab them at their ADP. Grab them a little sooner. They're going to outperform it. Check it out on today's show. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to crush humiliate and totally destroy your competition in your fantasy football draft. It's incredibly simple, so let me just break it down for you. Ultimate Draft Kit. The Ultimate Draft Kit for the fantasy footballers is hands down the best fantasy tool in existence. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's got sleepers, it's got busts, injury updates, full projections. This thing's even got full dynasty rankings. Don't overthink this. It's the only wingman you'll need this year. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com and grab your copy right away. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. So excited to be here. August 1st. The beginning. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, five days a week. It begins now. Yes. Yes. And we are. Wait a minute. Right now? Ready to rumble. Right now, five days a week. Every day is a fantasy football day. That's because every day is a great day. That was Jason Moore Howdy. in the building. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Is Hello. Here. Judge Giamatti is pulling levers and twisting dials. Is that really what we call him around the office? Yes. <laughs> it is the judge. Sometimes it's Judge Giamatti. Yes. Sometimes he gets a new nickname right before we start a show. Dep for whatever reason. Now, Brooks is a, he's a thorough producer. It is beyond to his credit if he wasn't we would it, we've never had to edit these shows we don't mess them up he always records them he doesn't forget anything we mute our phones we go through this huge checklist but before every show he goes through the checklist and we are very impatient mm. rude S super rude unkind distracted we, distracted mm -hmm. don't permit bathroom breaks no for, never for uh mr brooks mm-hmm and uh, so I just appreciate you withstanding us because it's going to get worse, Brooks, because five days a week is coming. I'm ready. He's here. The people love him. The people oh. love Brooks. When we, uh, we're pre-recording this show, so we're not going to be covering the most recent news part. It's a mid-round madness show. We don't even know about the Lev Bell injury. <laughs> we're <laughs> unaware. Oh, come on. Come don't, on. don't do that. Don't do that. But what if? <laughs> You're shooting your shot. Come on. Don't say that. We do, There's no Lev Bell injury. Or is there? I don't know. We're pre-recording this show because we're in L.A. We've got our live show in L.A. Then we're back in Phoenix five days a week heading into the season. Uh, this show's coming out on Thursday, August 1st, which is the Hall of Fame game is happening tonight. Football is going to be played. Hopefully people stay healthy. Must watch television. It's always <laughs> such good football. You really want to make sure you tune in it's to my watch the Hall of Fame. Favorite game. five minutes. Because that's you, when I commit my I commit myself to that feeling. I want that buzz, that first game buzz. When your dynasty roster goes seventy five deep. Oh. It's Hall a of big Fame day. Game, it's, it's for you. But um August 22nd through the 25th, that's week three preseason. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, you get into the sweet spot of drafts uh, at or a little bit after that week three, try to mitigate injury risk and all of that. Um, listen, stay connected to the show. You can do that a number of ways. Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Maybe you only like Jason. You can follow him, at Jason FFL. I get it. You can follow Mike at <laughs> FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. Throughout the year, we'll be posting uh, lots of good information. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. You can watch the show. And the community, the listeners, the Foot Clan, you can join. You can become a part. Jointhefoot.com. Learn more about the Foot Clan. Learn more about an extra episode every week and a ton of cool perks for in-season 
Um, just bonus content, bonus. extra. You know, you, you sometimes you can't get enough fantasy football. That's why we started this show to begin with. We just wanted more. So here's the quick question of the day. Well, hold on. Yeah, I was hold say, on. Kind of <laughs> burying the lead here. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh-huh. Football assemble. The listener league. It's open. The listener league. You can now enter. Submissions this week and this week only. Yes, and this is the only time we're going to talk about it. This is it. This is it. You it's, can. It's for the truthers out there. If you want to participate in the listener league, here's how you do it. You get a shot. You need to submit your entry of whatever you think is going to be a fun something special to, to where we say, you know what? That person, that person wants to play in our league. I thought you were going to have fun. Sandwich. I love sandwiches. Send sandwiches to listener league <laughs> at fantasyfootballers.com. So whatever submission you want to submit, sometimes people make a video or make a song or draw a picture, or whatever. Sometimes whatever you they, think. It, full size. It's pretty much just impress us. Uh, sculptures. Full size sure. sculptures of me in important places that you built over <laughs> years. Yeah, here's, here's your hot tip of trying to enter. Don't send a block of text. Oh, look! I'll just be honest. Too long. Didn't read. We're if, too if many just, entries come in, and don't brag about your fantasy football trophy case because we that, assume you're all very good at fantasy football. Yeah, you listen to this show. You're good, <laughs> and we want it, it's it's fun. It's fun to be in this league, and that's what it. We what want it is. to know your personality yes. from your submission. In fact, Brooks. Brooks, yeah. the, the producer extraordinaire. Oh, booty, booty, bonfire. He connected to our show through that original. He was in the OG Listener League. Maybe you've heard of the biggest loser out there, Brian Ketron, who helps with some video. We've actually connected with a lot of people through the Listener League. We found out that just amazing submissions uh, fell in love, and now they're part of our network. Now we harass him daily. Right. Uh, Listener League at FantasyFootballers.com to submit your entries. We'll take them for a week. We'll go through, we'll add you, and um, that's it. And it, it will also be talking about the Megalo Bowl coming up, oh! which, which is a way that you can get into <sighs> next year's Listener League. But um, Jason's coming. It's coming Jason's, soon. Yeah. All right. Let's. All right. Quick question of the day. This one comes in off of Twitter from Brian Blazek. That's a powerful last name. Brian is a superhero. He is. What is your go-to trick for convincing somebody to accept a trade? You know, uh, we're setting the table for our team with the draft. We're getting ready to go. And then, look, 40% of your team is probably going to be the same at the end of the year from what you drafted. Maybe less. If it's, if it's my team, it's always less. So you're going to be making transactions, waiver pickups, and trades. How do you convince somebody to do a trade? What is your strategy? Uh, you know, we, we've shared this before, um, but I, I use the overwhelm them strategy. If you add in two more decent players, if you're going after a stud and you say, you know what? Okay, you can have this guy and this guy, but I'm going to also give this guy and this guy. You know, I'm going to throw in Deshaun Jackson and Marvin Jones in addition and just kind of overwhelm them. I, that's the way where it's like people have a hard time, especially if you've got draft picks available to trade. You can add in, you know, f future draft picks. And sometimes people go, I should never trade this player. You know, I should never trade my Christian McCaffrey or whatever. But they're offering so much, I feel like I have to take it. When in reality, is is not really that fair of a deal. When Usually when you're doing like a three-for-one trade, it's the person getting the one that wins. Because once I trade, I'm going to pick guys up off the waiver wire. Yeah. Maybe the guys you dropped, <laughs> sucker. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, and then you get, you get the best. I, I am a little feisty. Uh, and then you get the best player in the deal. It's funny because we, I was going to say overpay because I thought when you wrote overwhelm them, you were taking the pure troll approach. You're just, just sending smothering. the same offer over and over again until they give in. I don't think uh, that's a fun that's one. That's not a real but one. But it's not productive. No. It, look, the thing is, is just to add to what you're saying, a, tra a three for one trade is not a three for one trade. It is a three for three trade. You will receive one player back. You will spend two waiver pickups on additional players. You are not necessarily giving up as much as you think you are. If you can turn the dial a little bit, overwhelm them, like Jason said, I'm, I, that's the direction I go. Throw in a little extra and play to the team's strengths and weaknesses. 
Because if you're going to go in with an offer and they're on the fence and you can say, ah, you know, here's Edo Smith to handcuff your, uh, your Devonta Freeman. That's just the perfect little right. ancillary piece mm -hmm. to make a trade go through. Whenever you can get something for Edo, get something. And I would say it's it takes some time, but you just you got to build up your trade avatar, your the, the the confidence that people have knowing they're they're going into a trade conversation with you and you say this is my initial offer. You can either accept it, maybe you have a quick counter, otherwise this trade conversation is done. Why, Mike, don't you trade with me? Why won't you trade with me? What are you talking me? about? We made a Why trade. Why don't you trade with me more? Well, because I know what you tried to do in trades, which is not just improve I, uh, your team. It's make mine worse. Mike, at the exact Mike, same I want time. the best for you. I, yeah. I, I, I don't will Don't you this. understand that? All, 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 yeah, sure you do. All, all, all joking aside, that is another tip, though, is to uh, look at a team – and make sure it could improve that team. Ideally, your oh, trade gosh. your trade helps both <laughs> yeah. teams. That's not what Andy does. No, no. Andy just takes a shotgun approach. That's yes. another tip. Offer seven hundred trades, one will get accepted. And that look, that's what that's, you think I do. Yeah. No, that's we know that's what you do. And you you offer ten to one just, trades over everybody else. Look, in the it's league. like telemarketing. Like every, the who who likes a telemarketer? Who answers? Lit literally nobody. And Which is why I don't like being associated with them. Well, that's too bad because <laughs> this, this, is your, this is your trade approach because it just takes one. Mm -hmm. It takes one person to pick up the phone and go, well, maybe I, maybe that is interesting. Maybe the FBI would, is after me. I would love a free vacation. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I, I do go. I, I, I look for a nibble. They I, canceled my social security card. I'm standing on the, the beach of the lake with eight or nine fishing poles in my hand. I'm waiting for a nibble on one of them, so then I can start the conversation. I shotgun that starter out there, no doubt about it. And when somebody goes, well, I would never do that, but then I know I can have a deeper conversation. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I don't like the analogy <laughs> whatsoever. So uh, let's get into uh, the main event on today's show. By the way, if you want to keep up to date with the news, I know we said we recorded this a couple days earlier. Don't worry. We'll catch you up. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. We'll share some commentary. Um, you can also grab the Sleeper app and get all the latest news right to your phone. So check that out. Uh, they're great with the latest camp news, injuries, things like that. This is blasphemy. This is madness. He's not wrong. The, the middle rounds are a bit blasphemous this year. So why don't you talk about what we're doing today on the show? So mid-round madness, we're taking a look at specifically rounds four through eight, seeing if there are any players in those particular rounds that are jumping out at us that look like a a value for their ADP. Or Well, this player is going at wide receiver 30. I think they will at minimum finish at the wide receiver 30 and likely outproduce that. So, you know, you get a return on that draft investment. Yeah, so we're going to talk. We each picked out a couple guys that we really like between rounds four and eight that we think are values for where they're being drafted. Maybe they're underrated for a certain reason. There's a lot of reasons why guys drop in the draft. Um, we'll get into some of those today. You want, you want me to kick it off? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. All right. Well, I'm going to go with um, Tariq Cohen, running back. It's not even fair to call him a running back. Running back You're slash right. Backup running back. Uh, Thank you, Mike. Right. Thank you know you. what? I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. You know what he was last year, Mike? What was he? Oh, he was the backup running back. Co-starting running back. Oh, sure he was. 250-plus carries for Jordan Howard. Look, Tariq Cohen's going in the late fifth round as the RB28 right now, and I want that RB2 perceptive discount on Tariq Cohen. You want to know why? Because last year he finished as the running back 13 playing the quote-unquote backup running back role. You know what he isn't? He's not a prototypical running back. He lined up in the backfield 63% of his snaps last year. 20% of the time he was in the slot. That's more than any other running back in football. 13% of the time he lined up at the wideout position. He's going to be on the field, and he dominated. From weeks 3 through 15, one bus game from Tariq Cohen in this quote-unquote backup running back role because he's so electric He's so dynamic. 
He had four weeks where he was an RB1 in that span, another three weeks as an RB2 in that span, 23 years old, did everything he could do for that team. Unless Matt Nagy is a certifiable nut job, he's going to use Tariq Cohen, and I think you're going to find Tariq Cohen in the category that you found Darren Sproles in for year after year after year, which is why is Darren Sproles being drafted at the back half of these drafts? And then guess what? Productive, productive, productive. I just love Tariq Cohen at the draft value. Last year's RB13, draft him at RB28. It, Do I think he'll be RB13? Probably not because of his efficiency metrics. Do I think he'll be 16 to 20? Probably. It, look, so I, I have not been in on uh, Tariq Cohen this year, Tarak the dinosaur, Hunter Cohen. but He's not in reason, on you with that nickname either. <laughs> the thing is, is, I mean, last year he was the running back 13 and half point PPR leagues. I think a lot of people are surprised – to know that or remember that they just you know he's he's not viewed as a top option at all now if he has the role that he had last year I think he's electric I love the creativity from Matt Nagy and here's my worry the counterpoint for this is the first three weeks we talked about it before when we just went through their divisional preview the fact that the first three weeks of the season Jordan Howard, who you remember all the hype in the preseason where they were working on his pass catching, working on his pass catching. Then they come out and they start throwing the ball to him left, right, and center. He's a pass catching back for the first few weeks, except he stinks at it. He's not good, and they completely go away and say, okay, we've got this Tariq Cohen guy. He's a great pass catcher from weeks four on. That's where you say he had one bus game and was great. Those first three weeks, he was the running back 47-57 and 34 when he wasn't getting that work. So the question to me is just, did they trade up to get David Mopportunity, David Montgomery, rookie running back for the Chicago Bears, because of his all-around skill set, because they want to use that as as we kind of saw to start last season, and that hurts the receiving role of Tariq Cohen, or did they just go and get a nice, fresh, young back to play that Jordan Howard role? And Tariq Cohen will will keep it. That's, to me, when I'm on the clock and I'm staring down Tariq Cohen, that's the decision I have to make and say what I believe Tariq Cohen is or, or really what I believe David Montgomery is. Yeah, I understand that. He only had Cohen was RB13 with 99 carries last year. You don't care if he gets the carries. He had 71 Correct. receptions. It, to me, it's just it's a big leap. Uh, of excitement, B people feel like they need to choose is the way the situation I'm in. You have to sit there and you have to go, boy, if I buy into Cohen, yeah, I don't have to not buy into David Montgomery. I don't think you have to choose. Now, do I want to stack them on my own team? No, I don't want two of the same guys at the same position. But I don't think you have to choose from liking both. I like David Montgomery. I think he's going to be a monster. But if you have a brain and you play and you're a head coach in the NFL, taking one of the most effective Big play guys off the field is the dumbest thing you can do. I don't think that Matt Nagy is going to go into the season and go, you know what, a rookie belongs out there instead of the guy who is more efficient doing this than anybody in football and is 23 years old, uh, 24 years old. It just doesn't make sense to me. I think he's being devalued because of that perception. But, look, if he's in the 50-catch range, you'll be really sad. You'll be disappointed. You don't have as much room for error with any of the pass-catching running backs. Austin Eckler. Any of those guys, uh, if, if they're a pass catcher, you don't have as much room for error in terms of if they're not doing that one functional uh, niche, you're in trouble, right? You don't get the baseline of 15 carries a game. But that's why that's these the guys struggle. are in the mid rounds. Obviously, if he was getting the workload everywhere, he'd be an early round. Yeah, and he's in guy. that. Yeah, he's in that category with, um, you know, some of the James White, you know, well, is, because yeah, here's the Kenyon thing. Drake. So last year. Tariq Cohen was number six in terms of running back receptions, but and he was very useful for fantasy. Next on that list, Jalen Richard. Yep. Were, were people happy they were starting Jalen Richard? Then Naheem Hines. Were you happy you were starting him with regularity? Then Theo Riddick. I mean, it's but I have a, but I have a, that's that is uh, to 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 defend you, Andy. That is where I think Tariq Cohen and his talent takes over. Like when you watch. Tariq Cohen is very similar to when you watch uh, Tyreek Hill. He's just faster than everybody. Nobody can catch the dude. That's not how you feel when you watch. Sure. When you watched well, Theo Riddick. And, and even using the beginning of the season as a template, I don't really like that very much because, yes, Jordan Howard couldn't produce to the degree that they may have wanted him to do it, 
But once you figured out what you had in Tariq Cohen, you used him to great success for the duration of the season. And then traded up to draft a pass catcher. After they let go, after they traded Jordan Howard away because they want somebody who fits the system. Not tra- they didn't do that to hurt Tariq Cohen. No, they did that to help right? the Bears. Yeah, they did that to help the Bears. The Bears that were a very, very good team last year, right? Were yeah. they not? They sure were. Yeah, so I think that it's um, – I think it'll be interesting to see. I know from camp, there's a lot of times when both these guys are on the field. David Montgomery was giving given opportunities on third down. Tariq Cohen's in the slot. You've got – out of Tariq Cohen snaps, 30-plus percent of the time, he doesn't even have to impede on David Montgomery being on the field – so it'll be interesting to see how they use him. I think he's a value. Um, Mike, who's your first uh, mid-round madness candidate? Well, I'll tell you about it in just a second, Andy. But All before right, we do sir. that, I want to thank today's sponsor. So professional. Zip Recruiter. Look, hiring people in these times, it sucks, and it takes a lot of your time. But not if you're using Zip Recruiter. They're the one place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. Where A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates – at ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. Look, ZipRecruiter, they send you, uh, they send your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards. They don't stop there with their powerful wizard matching technology magic. ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. It's so effective. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five of, their, of employers who post on ZipRecruiter Get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter.com slash F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L-E-R-S. ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Yeah, and, and look, if you are in that position where you're hiring people or, or you know running a business at all, we have a new a new sponsor, Rippling, who has an amazing software service online. It, it's really cool. We watched a walkthrough. They basically combine your HR management and your IT management. So any time that you spend updating your company's employee data or your 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 company systems, that's a minute you're wasting, not spending on your core job. And that's where Rippling comes in. They basically take all your HR needs, whether it's uh, payroll, health insurance, four hundred one k. You could sign someone up completing all of those tasks in as little as 90 seconds. And the same goes for IT. They have apps that connect, whether you use Gmail and GitHub and Slack, all in one unified onboarding flow. It really is amazing. That's why they won the PC Mag's Editor Choice Award. So if you're in that space, you need to check them out. If you're looking for an easier way to supercharge your employees, go to rippling.com slash footballers and get 20% off. That's rippling.com slash footballers for 20% off. All right. The first player I want to talk about for my mid-round madness highlights, Marvin Jones, wide receiver from the Detroit Lions. He's going in the middle of the eighth, wide receiver 36. And here's why I have re-fallen in love with Marvin Jones and his draft value. Last year, he had the seventh highest average depth of target 14.6 14.6 yards. That was at 15.2 in 2017. So very similar. Last year, over 900 air yards in nine games. The year before that, 1,600 air yards. So pacing exactly the same. 110 target pace last year to 107 in 2017. He had a touchdown on every seven receptions. That's seven, or sixth best in the league. When he was hurt, he was the wide receiver 26. While he was hurt? When he got hurt. When he got hurt, (laughs) yes. So he played nine weeks, and through that time, he was the wide receiver 26. And here's the thing. Here's the difference between Marvin Jones last year and the year before. The efficiency bit him in the butt. He was outrageous two years ago when he was a a wide receiver one, if I'm recalling that. He finished at 11 in some scoring Thank you. He was was fantastic. He was a late-round pick. And now he's being the, – the switch has happened. People buy into Kenny Galladay. Galladay is the number one. Oh, mm. because he's so smooth. Kenny G. Those routes are unbelievable. Meanwhile, poor, Marvin poor Jones – Marvin has no song. Me, <laughs> he doesn't deserve a song. Not yet. But he was doing almost the exact same thing last year as he did the year before. He was just miss, missing – on some of those 50-50 balls. And 
Matthew Stafford was apparently playing with some sort of a broken back last year. The efficiency swung the entire opposite direction. And he was still the wide receiver 26. I mean, he has been used the exact same way. I think Marvin Jones will continue to be used the exact same way. I think the big thing is that Stafford doesn't – I don't think Stafford has a preference. Stafford doesn't go into there right. and say, boy, Kenny's, Kenny's my one now, Marvin's my two. I think they go in there with 1A, 1B based on game plan in any given week. So that's why I like the value. I agree with you on Marvin. And but, it's not that I'm, – I'm not calling Marvin Jones to repeat and turn back into the that late-round wide receiver one that he was, but – He's going to finish higher than wide receiver thirty six. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, thirty six is madness. They're both. They're <laughs> thank you. This is madness. They're both on is the that field. Matt Patricia. Yes, and my ex. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, Gimli could stop the Marvin Jones hype, though. No, because this was he did this last year with Gimli. Well, That's but true. they didn't That's have Daryl Bevel, who now is going to come in and run the ball more. Fair. Don't get me started on Daryl Bevel. That's the Don't shade. Even get me started I on won't that. get you started on it, but that's the shade where you say they're not a very high passing volume team anymore, at least not expected to be. That being said, you but could he you could, never was. You could very easily argue that uh, you know the coverage, the number one coverage now rolls to Kenny Galladay as opposed to Marvin Jones. So when they're bath, both back on the field, instead of Marvin Jones being the one that defenses are focusing on and Kenny G being the benefic beneficiary. You're laughing because he said bath? I Visuals, man. Visuals, yeah. All right. Let's talk about <laughs> my guy. Look, uh, Jones, last point there. You know, I want to hear your mid-round. But Jones, he made his, uh, his name in Cincinnati – being the the red zone efficiency guy as well, so he's had a history of more years of being hyper efficient at scoring touchdowns yes. than not. So I I don't disagree with that. Um, in the bath, out of the bath, doesn't matter. Yeah, splish splash. Uh, so look, we've talked about this guy in the off season because when Tyreek Hill was out, I, I truly believed Sammy Watkins has the ability, <laughs> the reptilian bounce back ability to to be. Uh, like a top 15 wide receiver. I, I feel like I, I made the case for that. Obviously, things have changed. Tyreek Hill is back. He's not being suspended, and nobody now wants Sammy Watkins. He's dropping like a rock. Right now, he's at the top of the eighth round and still falling. This is not – he's at the 803. He's the 34th wide receiver being drafted, and still people aren't touching him. Andy, are you going to touch him there? I wouldn't touch him anywhere. Exactly, which is – very good, um, <laughs> except for fantasy football. So here's the thing: let's we can all agree that Sammy Watkins is a huge injury risk. I can't nobody nobody in the world could argue against that. That there's not the potential for that. That's something that's baked into a little bit more with certain players, but is still out there for everyone. Anyone can get injured, and anyone who has a long history of injury history. They do until they don't. You know, Frank Gore was such a red flag, if you can remember back 70 years ago when he was a young lad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every year. Injured. During the Great War. Yes, exactly. And nobody wanted him. And then all of a sudden he became the Iron Man. So I'm putting that aside a little bit. But the real question is, is he actually good when he's on the field? That's where I think, Andy, what would you say to that? You would say, was he successful for you in fantasy? Forget the games missed. But when he was out there, did you like having him? I think that when he was out there on the field, sure. Yeah, he gave you – he was pretty good last year. And and that is true. He was pretty good. <laughs> I was not expecting you to say that. No, no, no. That, I, 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 my, a, I'm on record saying I just think he's not the player that people expect him to be out of college. I don't think his ceiling is the same as people would want it to be. But I, I agree. Like when he was on the field last year for the best offense in football, pretty productive. Yeah, he was pretty productive. So you, if you take a look at his games and you just extrapolate him out 16 – that doesn't work because there were two games that he basically didn't play in. They wanted to test him out, and he had like, you know, uh, we're talking almost no snaps in those games, but they go down on the game log as games played. In truth... Because the, people probably played him, too. They, they might have. One, one of those some, two, some they might have. Some people might have played him. One That's of those of the two, problem. they might have. They, they wouldn't have played him for one of those where it was really iffy, but the point is he had eight games where he was actually on the field for, you know, more than 20% of the snaps and he's usually up around 70 or 80% of the snaps. In those eight games, he had 51 targets for 39 receptions, 515 yards, and three touchdowns. So you just double that because eight goes into 16. You're talking about a 1,000-yard receiver with six touchdowns, and that would have ranked. He would have had 178 fantasy points. That would have been just ahead of Amari Cooper last year as the wide receiver 17. That's what we saw already with Sammy Watkins in the best offense in football. 
And now he's an eighth round pick and dropping, being the 34th wide receiver taken. You've got a lot of the offseason was talking about the rapport being built with Sammy Watkins and and Pat Mahomes because Tyreek Hill wasn't there and you know he's going to step it up and a lot of a lot of good fluff pieces admittedly you know what else are you going to say well, uh, I, we I, have nobody if you're buying a house sometimes people do, they want to go with the new build you know what i mean it's pretty fun it might cost you a little bit more but you want to go with the new build cuz you just don't you don't want to do the fix them up project you don't want the contractors you don't want the work you don't want the headache Watkins feels a lot like that project sure. he feels like that kind of a like the real question I have is, look, I'm looking at Marvin Jones, Sammy Watkins, same round, three picks apart. Who would, do you want? Do you want Sammy Watkins or do you want Marvin Jones? Marvin Jones. And I would take Sammy. So, I mean, it's just one of those in those mid-rounds. It's really a, a difference. So, I was looking at, like, I'm usually an early running back drafter. So, it's in these rounds that I'm looking for wide receivers. And depending on which wide receivers I got early, maybe I want safe, maybe I want upside. I see Sammy Watkins clearly as not the safe pick. But he's the upside pick. He's the guy that you say, hey, if he ends up with a handful, of, if he ends up with 10 touchdowns because Pat Mahomes slinging him out and he's done it before, all of a sudden now you do have an upper end wide receiver two for a great team. What happens if Travis Kelsey has problems with the ankle? Yeah, I mean. It, for Sam, what happens to Sammy Watkins? I think Sammy Watkins becomes a huge beneficiary because you've seen him. Big, big guy. As an efficient red zone option. And when you match that with a really great red zone uh, quarterback that great things can happen that would they, be something to watch for they definitely used him differently yes. in Kansas City than he, he ever had in his four previous years he had never seen a catch percentage above 62 and a half and he was over 72 percent last year they didn't year. take the deep shots with him because they had other players to they do had Tyreek right. Hill wide open where he's like I'm looking deep oh that little guy Let's he go was much more of a possession guy yes and, and that that makes him interesting for sure all right so Sammy, Basically, Sammy's dropped enough to where you you are back. I'm back in, on if, Sammy. If I can get a hundred plus targets from Pat Mahomes in the eighth round, I'm going to sure. take it. That's sure. as, that's all it is. All right, my second candidate for mid round madness is Latavius Murray, running back for the New Orleans Saints, currently being drafted at 706. That is the running back 34 off the board, fringe RB three, RB four category. I already went with an RB2. Might as well go with another one here with Latavius. Why not? Uh, look, last year, for all intents and purposes, like, it was a bad year for Mark Ingram. Expectation, missed the first four games. Still, all but two of Mark Ingram's weeks, he was inside the top 34, just playing the complimentary role to Alvin Kamara. Look, y y this team is not going to overuse Alvin Kamara. They have a, an agenda that involves playoff games and the Super Bowl. And I, I think we've seen from Latavius Murray over the last several years, there is a trust around the goal line with him. He was effective in that role in Minnesota. And this is the number three offense in football that he gets to go to. So I just simply think Latavius Murray, without an injury to Alvin Kamara, mind you, if an injury happens, my goodness, how good. Where does Latavius Murray go in drafts today if Alvin Kamara was on the shelf tomorrow? Mm. I mean, the, cause, I, I cause feel he, like he, heard. Can, he can catch – the football third round sort of I don't think he goes that high but no. I mean because he, he's still he's still going to be undervalued because people don't there are just players you don't want well to I love Damien Williams in. though I mean Damien Williams draft capital is there because he's on one of the best sure. offenses in football all I'm saying is if an injury happened obviously you've got a home run I'm not projecting that but I can't help but think he finishes ahead of RB 34 with week-to-week -week flex appeal in an offense that's going to be this good in in year to year to year Sean Payton's offenses they lead the league in rushing touchdowns. I mean, this is just their MO, and it doesn't get – it's only going to get better as this team – what, 13-3 and three last year? Right. Great defense. Drew Brees is getting older. And last year, Mark Ingram saw 11 goal line carries. That was <clears throat> that was sixth most in the NFL. And, and he and missed four games. And that was missing games. four games. Right. And I'm not, they're not just going to move all of that over to Kamara. No, they're not. And Latavius is known for being, you know, they give him the rock down there. So I think it's very interesting. I think that he's obviously being discounted heavily because of the fact people don't view him as the same talent as Mark Ingram. But Ingram just wasn't really as great last year as he was the year before. It's almost like he was missing something. Ingram? Yeah, like, mm. like a part of his training regiment that he was pulled away from. That uh, he had to miss some time 
hmm. because of this particular training Something regimen. that might enhance his performance on the field? Something like that. Okay. All right. So um, I know you guys like Latavius at that value. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you're not going to fight me. I am not going to fight you on that one. No. I no. will fight you if you try to tell me that he is very good, though. <laughs> I think Latavius I Murray is fine. I think he's fine. I accept your fine Here's comments. the other thing. They, they were quick. They moved they were, on him quick. They, they did. They identified him. I trust Sean Payton, and I, they identified him quick and signed him quick. Like and it if wasn't. You, if you remember, Latavius Murray was saying he's only going to go to some place where he could really. He wants to be an integral part to an offense. He wants to get the ball and be utilized. That's where he was going to go. We were mocking. Well, yeah, that. he was going to be the starter, right? And then he he goes and immediately signs with the Saints. It will be a one-two punch there. That is, it's always been the case. It'll be that way again. Uh, Mike, all right, what you got? I want to talk about a player who has been the the hype train through training camp has been rolling along at a steady pace because it looks like he is actually healthy. I want to talk about wide receiver Cooper Cup from the Rams. Right now he's going on Fantasy Football Calculator as about the wide receiver 21. And I have been very hesitant to endorse Cooper Cup at his draft price. It's very, it's tough to buy a guy coming off of an ACL tear. I know that in today's age, you know, of medicine, players recover, but they don't necessarily recover right away. And this is still, you got to pay attention to Cooper Cup. If some, if he gets a hamstring injury on the same leg where he tore the ACL, then. Red alert. Then you just erase all of this. Men in black flash this from your memory. But he was clear to be a full participant in training camp eight months after the ACL surgery last year when he was playing in weeks one through five. He was the wide receiver too. Only Adam Thielen, who had taken his final form and was dominating fantasy football, that was the only player slightly ahead of Cooper Cup as the wide receiver too, 7.8 yards after the catch. That's best of qualified wide receivers. And what about his ability to return from injury? Well, we kind of got a sneak preview of that, a little trailer last year when we thought Cooper Cup was done for the year. He went down, and it looked bad, and he was gone. He missed a few games. When he came back, 5 for 89 and a touchdown. It was right back into the scheme as being a heavily utilized wide receiver, a primary red zone guy, Last year, well, and I mean, this only bumps guys up. His total target number, Andy, I hope you're ready for this one. Oh, because it was 55. <laughs> oh, he only played five full games and still had six touchdowns last season. This is it, it's his third year. Like, it feels to me like Cooper Cup feels like a guy where you've been talking about him for a long time. This is only his third year in the league. He's on the what a top. Two offense in the league between. But do you believe that those three wideouts can all finish in the top twenty? I do because you you you're oh kind of, I very much do I very yes this is this is the Green Bay Packers of old where three wide receivers can finish that high. Did you see Cooper Cup's quote getting back into practice? I'm awesome. I'm tripping over myself. I'm so juiced. Oh, careful with that. Whoa, <laughs> uh -oh. Whoa, we can't talk about Mark Ingram and then say that word. Yeah, I mean, like, I like you said, Cooper Cup was the wide receiver two th for that stretch. Robert Woods finishes the wide receiver 10. Brandon Cooks finishes the wide receiver 13. They it's, can, yeah, it's, it's just double-edged with, with the limited time you had with Cooper last year, right? It's like you wouldn't have projected that over a whole season like he's going to be. No, the, no. Would you have thought he's the number two guy at the end of last year if he kept going? Not number two. Okay. No, but like top 15 is in – and – the fact that spurts of being the number two guy is like in his range of outcomes because it's it's not us projecting maybe he can do that. It's no, he literally was doing that. His camp report changed you a lot. It did because you weren't this bullish on him obviously before no. you knew he was back. He was not on the active pup. He's super juiced. Yes, as are you. I, I am, I, and he's a great player. And he is he is the primary red zone receiver for the Sean McVay Los Angeles Rams. I'm very interested yeah, in that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, compelling. All right, so I brought up my my risky swing for the fences mid-round wide receiver. I'm going to pivot over to my very good odds to beat where he's being drafted, safe draft pick wide receiver, and that's a legend of the mm. game. 
Larry. Larry Fitzgerald. I know all the media right now is about Christian Kirk because Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury, it's, it's all about what's new, what's flashy. It's about the future in Arizona, not the, the past, clearly. And Larry Fitzgerald is not the future. So Christian Kirk is going way ahead of Larry Fitzgerald. And if I'm being honest and I say, hey, one of these two guys finishes the year at wide receiver 14, it's going to be Christian Kirk, not Larry. I don't think that's in his range of outcomes at 36 to be a top-end wide receiver. But I also think it's not in his range of outcomes to just be a bust, not be a very productive NFL wide receiver because he always does. The Cardinals were terrible last year their quarterback play accurate was the was not accurate their quarterback <laughs> play was horrific and Larry Fitzgerald finished as the wide receiver 27 he was just outside of the wide receiver two in fact if you remember starting the year with Sam Bradford and then getting uh, acclimated to uh, you know Josh Rosen it was it was even worse than they finally kind of got it going a little bit and I mean a little bit uh, over the over the rest of the season, but from week seven through the end of the season, Larry Fitzgerald, I know it's hard to remember because of how bad the Cardinals were. He was the wide receiver seventeen. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer for a reason, and he's got a much better quarterback, a faster pace of play. So the question you have to ask yourself, because he's being drafted as the wide receiver thirty eight this season, is do you think that one year older Larry and the up and coming nature of Christian Kirk? are worth more in the equation than the changeover of a fast-paced, pass-friendly offense with an accurate quarterback. Which one's more important? If they wash each other out, then Larry finishes around wide receiver 27. You drafted him as the wide receiver 38. That's just a, a good bet, a good move. If it turns out that the more important thing is that they're scoring more touchdowns, going down the field, passing a lot, I think Larry Fitzgerald is the odds-on favorite to lead the team in targets – they might not be the most valuable targets. I think Christian Kirk is going to be working downfield more than Larry will. But the slot is extremely, extremely important in an air raid system. And I, I don't think Larry has the potential to be a top 15 wide receiver. But if you're telling me he's going to be the wide receiver 50 or, or 40 where he's being drafted, I, I, I don't buy it. I, and if you watch some of the videos coming out of camp, he hasn't lost nothing. I mean, he's making miraculous one-handed catches well, if on you're the sideline. I mean, we're out here in Arizona, and he, Larry just kind of gets his in the offense from a target share perspective. It's just kind of built into what he, he – none of his skills have degraded since he moved to the slot to, to necessitate anything else, and you've got unproven rookies. You've got Christian Kirk coming back from injury. I, I understand you're tempering this wisely. You're not saying Larry's going to go out there and be the Larry of old, but that's not – you know, you don't need him to be when yeah, you draft him at wide I'm receiver 38. He's going to outproduce where he's being drafted, and if you're in a half point or full point PPR, he's still going to soak up a lot of targets. And if – I mean, look, Kyler Murray has skyrocketed. He was undrafted for a while. Now he's in the eighth round with Larry Fitzgerald. If he's going to do what a lot of people think he's going to do, then Larry will be a beneficiary, as will Christian Kirk, but Christian Kirk is the only one whose ADP is actually going up. Larry's is not because he's old. If Kyler Murray, and this is speaking completely biased as a Arizona Cardinal fan, if he does what people think he's going to do, our next year of podcast will take place from the surface of the moon. That is correct. Because I will yeah. be able to fly there. The only problem with that is I, I don't think it is safe to be on the surface of the moon with no pants. <laughs> I think you need that suit, and we won't be able to wear those pants. So there are is, worries there that are might concerns. be the end of the show. Listen, before we close this show, I do want to let people know. Honey, honey, <laughs> on reentry, the atmosphere, look, that the, the pants. The I, pants. That, that's what happened. They burned up. We have a huge update that we just released for the Ultimate Draft Kit. This year we've been so excited. Look, the last few years, the Ultimate Draft Kit, it's it's our baby. We work on it from uh, the entire offseason, getting this thing ready, keeping it up to date. This year we added the app. Now we've upgraded the app. We listened to your requests. We added a bunch of new features. You can now use the app to actually mark players as drafted, to hide drafted players, to star and mark players. I use it with our league of record to, you know, I've got my keepers marked. I've got all the drafted keepers gone off the list. I've got my favorite players starred. It is a perfect kind of ancillary sit with you on draft day 
tool, and there are a ton of features that you get inside of the Ultimate Draft Kit. Now you can use it on the go with the mobile app. We're very excited about it. Uh, I encourage you to go check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. We're into August. The big uh, the draft days are coming, and they're coming quickly. So I encourage you to check it out. And again, we got a show tomorrow, guys. Oh, man. We got a show tomorrow. We're going to be back tomorrow with more goodness. So thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. We're excited for 2019. We're going to help you win your league. I promise you that. And we'll see you tomorrow and then Monday and the next day and the next day. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Hey, Foot Clan, don't forget Rippling is the first platform that combines all your HR and IT systems together. So when you hire someone new, they let you take care of all the HR needs, including payroll, health insurance, 401k, and as little as 90 seconds. Same goes for IT. You can order their computer, create their accounts, all in the apps you use, like Gmail and Slack, in one unified quick onboarding flow get 20 percent off at rippling.com slash footballers and foot clan don't forget about pristine auction yesterday at george kittle 49ers logo football for just 73 bucks there are hundreds of daily auctions over there and if you go to pristineauction.com and use the registration code ballers before you start browsing those auctions you get five dollars towards your first purchase check it out there are steals there are deals each and every day all authentic autographed items pristine auction dot com.